business owners, and executives from around the valley. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Good morning and thank you for watching Business Leaders. My name is Lance Cardoza and we're in the studios here at KMPH Fox 26. I'd like to thank Flooring Liquidators for making this episode possible and also your Fresno Grizzlies. It's baseball time in downtown Fresno. And right now we're talking about downtown Fresno on today's episode. The Downtown Fresno Partnership President Elliot Balch on the program today. Elliot, thank you for coming in. Great to be with you, Lance. We've known each other for quite some time, and I've never had you on my radio show or on my television <laughs> show. <laughs> well, it's great to be with you, yeah. yeah. And uh, respect everything that you've been doing downtown for a long time. I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of downtown, as yeah. you know, and everybody uh, uh, knows. Yeah. I, I live downtown, and yeah. I, uh, I just, I, I, I've seen it go through so many transitions, and you keep seeing uh, it get closer and closer and then the, we had the pandemic and it pulled us back two steps and here we are again we're getting closer and closer of some really sure great enough. things and yeah. the great things that are happening now for real I mean yeah. it's amazing to think back you know even 10 years ago and some of the things that we see happening with people out on the street by the thousands uh, on an art hop night those first Thursday evenings you know yeah it wasn't that long ago that we could hardly imagine a soul being out on Fulton Street yeah. or the Fulton Mall for those nights. So we have to, we do have to take a pause sometimes and recognize how far we've come. Yeah, I remember a day, and I think it was Mayor Swearingen, yeah. and you remember, it was a march on the mall. Yeah. It was the mall then before that they was, opened that it up to street. That was pre-Mayor Swearingen. That was yeah. pre-Mayor, that's right. Yeah. That was before yeah. she yeah. took office. Yeah. And uh, she had a megaphone, and yeah. we, we did a reenactment of all these cool things that could happen down there if it was an open street or just the mall and and uh, you look back now and you take a look at it and it's happening yeah those things are happening and it's starting to happen yeah. and um, it's hard because you can't convince maybe other parts of the city to come down and uh, invest in downtown or be a part of downtown but there is an urban culture there of is. people yeah. and people that live there yeah. that you yeah. see the, uh, you yeah. almost see the forest through the trees. You totally, and, and there's a regional need, you know? Yeah. Like downtown is obviously an important part of our city, heart of Fresno, but for folks in Fresno, the metro area and, and well beyond, it is that place that's special. It's something they can't get in their home community or neighborhood. And so that's, that's really what we see. When downtown is cooking, I mean, you look out and you see a great cross section of our valley population that's young, young families, and yeah. just folks, you know, they, people want more. Yeah, yeah, they want more of it. Yeah. And uh, my daughter, she opened Hummus Republic right. downtown Fresno, yep. and I remember she was like, Daddy, downtown? She knew I believed in downtown. She knew she loved downtown because yeah. she grew up yeah. being downtown. And uh, we thought, well, let's look for a place, and it was one of the best things they ever did. And uh, they're, they're in a little tough spot right there on that, that corner in 2424 Tillery Street. There's their plug, Chloe. <laughs> but <laughs> with Hummus Republic and got uh, yeah. their second restaurant now north. Nice. But they started in downtown. They rolled the dice yeah. and uh, it was really good for them. So, but there's been a lot of restaurants and companies over the years that um, it's, it's a tough go. But it's a tough go in that business anyways. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. I mean, yeah. hats off to the restaurateurs because it is tough. It's tough. Um, and you got to really push that market but you know the great thing that we're seeing that again one of those like look back a few years and could we have imagined is when the grizzly season kicked off that we're in now we were able to go out and talk to our restaurants breweries and bars and find no fewer than two dozen places that were committed to being open before games every yeah. Thursday Friday and Saturday home game yeah you know two dozen are downtown so that I mean that's a critical mass you can mm -hmm. really plan to have that great baseball experience be a great Fresno experience, a great downtown experience, adding some of that urban uh, life to your to your evening. Exactly. We yeah. were talking, uh, you, you never get to see the people behind the scenes here on Business Leaders, but Justin Wall back here behind the camera was at a concert at Tioga. And um, I hope you weren't supposed to be at work, Justin. But he was there at the concert, and we were sold out at the Fresno Grizzlies. Mm -hmm for Star Wars night oh, downtown. Yeah. And it was yeah. such a beautiful thing to see so much foot traffic. And like you said, those restaurants being open, Tioga and that whole brewing district, there was yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and there yeah. was a lot of activity going yeah. on. Yeah, 
it's real special. So I know not everybody, you know, in the viewing audience today may count themselves in as part of that. I'm part of that market of people who's there on a weekly basis. But what's so special is that there are two million people in this four county area, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it is the downtown for everyone. Absolutely. You yeah. mentioned something in talking about the downtown, Fresno Downtown Partnership, yeah. and yeah. you just recently took the helm as the yeah. president of the yeah. partnership. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about being the heart of the city, and you've looked at some of these cities like Denver and other cities that really focused on their downtown, because when anybody comes from the outside to come visit our great city, uh, they want to look at the downtown. The architecture, we have some beautiful downtown buildings, mm. and uh, they want to feel like the heart is healthy. They want to feel like if that heart is pumping well and that body is doing good, it's because you focused on your heart. Uh, and you're doing that yeah. with the downtown partnership. Talk to me about some of the things that you've implemented already since we've uh, you've took helm. Yeah, which has been about two months at this point. So it kind of feels like I've been at the job for two months and also been working on downtown for about 20 years, you know, yeah. in different ways. So am I new to it? I sometimes have, <laughs> I, can't, yeah. I don't know how to answer. But no, we're, uh, amazing things are happening just in these last few weeks. We've had um, this historic commitment and um, opportunity with Mayor Dyer um, getting millions of dollars from the state to hire young people, largely folks who may have barriers to employment, um, mm -hmm. as youth ambassadors. And this isn't necessarily just downtown, but we've got a bunch of these young people in our downtown who are out. You can see them clearly in uniformed shirts and they're um, really helping keep the downtown clean. A lot yeah. of litter pickup. I mean, it's amazing. The good news is they're picking up a lot of trash. The bad news is we had a lot of trash to pick there up. for them to pick up, but, yeah. but how wonderful, right? Um, yeah. And just the energy and excitement that they have having chosen downtown, you know, and I tell them that downtown has chosen them for a very special, you know, an important mission. I ran into one of your ambassadors at mm -hmm. Fulton Coffee. Yeah. Fulton, uh, yeah. in the, while I was there, I saw the shirt. Yep. He was coming in and grab a cup of coffee. And I said, I saw a team of your people over by Bitwise when I drove in. Mm -hmm. And as I went down the Fulton Mall, I saw two or three people walking down the Fulton Mall. Yeah. Then when I walked in the coffee shop, I saw two or three just outside there cleaning up there. Yeah. And it's just, a, there's a big movement, as you said, yeah. in downtown. We're going to take a short break, Kelly. We'll come right back. We'll talk about the Downtown Fresno Partnership with the President, Elliot Balch, and more. It's time to put your 40 under 40 nomination in. When we come back, we'll tell you how to do that right here on Business Leaders. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Business Leaders. If you'd like to catch this episode and other episodes of Business Leaders, go to businessleaders.tv. That's businessleaders.tv. And if you get podcasts and you want to listen to this episode and the rest of our catalog of episodes, you can get it at Business Leaders with Lance on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Before we went on the break, we were talking about the 40 under 40. And my guest today, the president of the Downtown Partnership, Fresno, Elliot Balch was in the original class right here in Fresno in 2007. Elliot, you were in our first 40 under 40 class. It was downtown, uh, the downtown club. Yep, it was, and I was under 40 then. Uh, yeah, which was, <laughs> was great to remember that long yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, you still look under 40. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, so you were in that class of uh, 2007. I didn't realize yeah. that till we talked today. Yeah. Yes, it's, yeah. A, it's a pretty special memory, and just but also seeing over time just how much how great it is to recognize our young leadership in the community because we have a young population and we have folks who really are taking control of the future. Exactly. Leader, so it's and I see a lot of new business and business come together mm -hmm. from people that met in their class totally. at the 40 under 40. And, and if you know somebody under the age of 40 that is a rising star of our valley or an entrepreneur, a civic leader, somebody that's making a difference in the community we all live in, 
in this four county area surrounding Fresno, make sure you go to 40, the letter U, 40.com. That's 40, the letter U, 40.com for the 40 under 40 and put your nomination in, a 250 word description and nominate somebody that uh, you're thinking about right now, Elliot. I know yep. you probably have yep. somebody in mind. I'm you're going to surrounded go by people that would be great. Yeah. So, yeah, we're talking about some really young, great future leaders of Fresno out there yeah. uh, on our street downtown Fresno, and I'm, like you said, in their uniform, professional, mm -hmm. talking to people. Yeah. I was uh, going down the mall, or I still call it the mall, mm -hmm. but I was going down Fulton Street, yep. and I saw them assisting somebody and directing them where to go have uh, the best whatever type of food they were looking for. Yep. And it was just really cool to see a young person uh, talking with somebody else and giving them some advice about downtown Fresno. Yep. yep. It's hospitality. You know? yeah. It's that first impression. And it doesn't take much sometimes, but just that feeling of being welcome. Yep. yep. There's a big, uh, big news over this past couple of weeks that has hit downtown Fresno. I know Mayor Dyer uh, was uh, announcing it, something like $250 million worth yes. of big news. Yep. Uh, for the downtown core. Yep. Can yep. you talk to us about that? It is big news because this is the governor has proposed uh, $250 million to finance infrastructure in downtown Fresno. And like we were talking about with those ambassadors really making today special, mm -hmm. think about infrastructure as what makes tomorrow special. And if we're going to have, continue to have progress uh, for downtown and if downtown is going to become that home for as many people as it could be, to build housing, the housing that we need in our regional housing market, yeah. it's going to take infrastructure. Some of the infrastructure that we have downtown is more than 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to build the future on pipes that are 125 years old, yeah. you know, you're going to run into a, an issue of either something's got to give. You know, does the housing yeah. become more expensive? Does it get held up? Yeah. Or do we invest as a state and locally in um, making sure that we can have the kind of development that we expect for our downtown. Beautiful. So that was a yeah. big win for Fresno. Well, it's a win yeah. in the making because yeah. the governor's proposed it. It's in the budget. But now the legislature, as we're speaking, um, is reviewing, okay. as they do with the whole budget, you know, yeah. each item. And so we've got a, and we've been out talking to our business owners. We've had an unprecedented response from small business owners in downtown um, just in the matter of a day or two our team got 44 letters from pro business owners saying yes please you know and when you think about what it means to invest in the infrastructure that mm -hmm. makes housing possible I think about the smallest businesses because and I've had this conversation with some of our downtown business owners they say I love that downtown is a regional destination yeah we always need to be a regional destination and I'm small and so if you put customers far away, I need customers to be really close. I need that low hanging fruit as part of my customer base. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, or if you're a small developer, you need to have that infrastructure ready for you to plug in. You know? mm -hmm. And I've helped larger developers figure out the infrastructure puzzle project by project. It's not for the faint of heart, you yeah. know, it, it, and so we're really thinking about the you know, getting all of our small businesses and first time developers and everybody engaged in yeah. the development process through the infrastructure investment. You know, you, know, you talk about that and I, I've gone to cities where I've seen an urban core build yeah. some really cool yeah. urban developments, yeah. you know, from container, beautiful projects. And I remember coming back to a very large developer mm. in real estate and home developer in Fresno and, and they loved the idea and I remember now I recall this conversation almost maybe 15 years ago that said um, the infrastructure mm -hmm. needs to get yeah. to come all boats need to rise at some point right now mm -hmm. yeah. infrastructure is way down here in right. that core of downtown yeah. and I remember that conversation so may, maybe if this gets passed this will open the eyes of those investors that might look in downtown Fresno now yeah. because it makes sense yeah well and you know, the importance of infrastructure, look no farther than Fulton Street itself. Uh, we've seen uh, since the before the project to today a 15x increase in the amount of uh, taxable sales that is being recorded. Um, more than double the rate of increase of other areas over the similar time frame yeah. in South Fresno. 
So you really see, and then you see uh, uh, smartphones these days, the data gives us numbers on where people are going. Actually, yeah. numbers of people, and we're up 20% from before COVID. You know, we've, we've doubled the number area. of people in downtown from the depths of COVID. Wow. We're going to take one more break, Kelly, and when we come back, I want to talk to, talk to you about the downtown partnership, because I know there's a lot more that you're working on, but you've been laying this groundwork in downtown for many years now. So when we come back, we'll talk to you about that. Elia Balch, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Business Leaders. I want to remind you, earlier in the show, we were talking about the 40 under 40. It's that time of the year where we're taking those nominations right now. Make sure you go to 40, the letter U, 40.com. I know you're thinking about somebody or you're thinking about a business that is hardworking. She's fantastic and they'd be great to be recognized. And a lot of times those people, you think, oh, they get recognized all the time. And a lot of times they don't. And Elliot, you can recall when you got the call about you're in the 40 under 40, at first you think, what are they trying to sell me? <laughs> well, yeah, and it was brand new in those days because yeah. it, was, it was ancient times. But yeah. yeah. But when you go there and you see oh, the group, energy. Yeah. yeah, the energy yeah. of yeah. like-minded yeah. people driven. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you've been to the latest one we yep. had. Yep. Uh, just an incredible group of people. And every year. It's inspiring. Sarah Moffat says it yep. best. My yep. class was the best. There yep. won't be another yep. better one. But every year, <laughs> every year she's convinced, true. wow, we got another <laughs> incredible class. Yeah, it's true. And, and nominate them before it's too late because, you know, people, yeah. we do age out. Yes. I, I can speak to that. that that's the hard one. I always tell the committee, if they're 39, we got to really think about this. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not in yet, we got to get them in the 40 under 40. Uh, it's an amazing night. It's always a great celebration. And we hold it in December every year. And make sure you get those nominations in and, and from somebody that's really deserving of that honor to be in the 40 under 40. Uh, Elliot, we were talking about you paving the way of the Fresno Downtown Partnership, sort of for your career and what you're doing today, that you've worked on several different projects from mayor's office to economic development, uh, many projects I've seen you work on over the years. Uh, do you sort of see all those roads coming together with yeah it makes perfect sense in retrospect yeah if only if only somebody had told me that it would <laughs> yeah but there was a reason you're doing all There's these a things. reason and it does all tie together and build on on itself but in 2007 at that 40 under 40 you know year i mean i was involved with the organization called the downtown association mm -hmm. which had its roots from 1955 you know this idea that uh property owners and business owners in particular could get together and take on problems that were bigger than any one owner, one you know individual could could address by themselves. Yeah. And so the the idea has always been there that we're together, we're we're greater than the sum of our parts. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that organization was underfunded, and so that was one of the things that um, got us working together with property owners to approve a new concept, a mm -hmm. property-based assessment district, property and business improvement district. That's what they call the PBID. Yeah, the PBID. Yeah. That's what it stands for. And it's, it's an extra property tax that property owners pay in downtown where we do marketing. We do clean and safe programs like those ambassadors we were talking about earlier or um, making sure events happen on Fulton specifically. So um, those are some things that no individual property owner could do by themselves. Mm -hmm. If you go to a shopping mall, you have one owner mm -hmm. taking care of those things for everybody. So to compete with that dynamic, we've got to have, um, we've got to have these kind of services. Yeah. But then what's really special is, that's the foundation of things. Together, being together, working together, we can identify what are the things we need to advocate for. We can work on is this a good environment for development to happen? Yeah. Figure out, help figure out financing and broker relationships and some of these things together. Uh, or take on projects that you know, may not pencil on their own, 
but would sure help everybody if they were there. Everything from restrooms to childcare to, yeah. you know, where's a All boutique hotel, are, right? It exactly, out, yeah. produces a lot of benefit for everybody else. So we're, we're in this position as the ownership association to take on these things that everybody, no one person is incentivized to figure yeah. out, but that everybody's incentivized to figure out. Exactly, and, it, and it's a, it's, you're not in alone. Right. You're as the business owner, you're not in this alone because yeah. there's no way you could afford yeah. to do what you need to do like the partnership can do for them yeah. as well. So I almost feel like it's a, and that was one of the things my daughter picked downtown as yeah. a restaurant. That there's, yeah. there's something, there's an incentive in there beyond yeah. Yeah. just coming in and signing the lease and hoping your anchor stores are going to draw you traffic. Totally. Uh, yeah. That you could come in with like-minded people yeah. and participate and grow yeah. uh, with it as well. Yeah. And I've always told her with downtown, it's, uh, it's coming. It's always yeah. coming. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I've seen it change so much over the years. Yeah. And it's always every year it's something new that's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a perfect uh, time to be yeah. downtown Fresno. But, you know, success breeds success with anything. Yeah. Right. And so having been involved, like you said, with the administration, worked for five years at the city on Fulton Street as well. And, you know, that project turned out well. There's been successful outcomes. We mm -hmm. see the people out on the street. You know, people want to get more involved. They see the they see what's possible when we're working together. Yeah. So, you know, as a business owner, it's one of the most independent things that you can do in America, right, is yeah. to do that. But yet, uh, so many of our business owners and property owners want to be part of this community because mm -hmm. they know that we can do more together. We can do more. And I yeah. tell people all the time, you know, you know, I've been here in downtown's core for a long time yeah. and we're running out of time, but I got to share this short story that you look at the, the success of Chicken Shack with Damon, yeah. and you look at uh, next door, there's the sushi yep. store. Toshiko. They were owners out of the area yep. that saw a change in downtown Fresno and said, yeah. now is the time. Yeah. Yeah. And they took a risk, and yeah. look what it's doing for them. So yeah. I tell business people in Fresno, yeah. now's the time. You yeah. really need to look at it. Yeah. And some of your bigger uh, companies that are north and Clovis and other places, mm -hmm. Take a chance on downtown Fresno. Mm -hmm. Last word, anything? Well, you know, what's great about that too is that when we go as Fresnans to another city, we look downtown for what's going on. So think about that as other people are coming to Fresno. Absolutely. That's, that's you, got, you gotta give them a good uh, look right yeah, in the beginning and downtown's it. a lot of fun. Yep. I bring people down there all the time. That's all the time we have. We'll have business leaders every Tuesday morning right here on KMPH Fox 26.